Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we have another episode brought to you by DLT Trading. Look them up for all of your knife and EDC needs, and be sure to hop over to DLTTrading.com to check out their full supply of EDC knives and gear. And uh, hopefully you will find this guy in stock right here. This here is none other than the Cold Steel Engage. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 8.187 inches with a blade length coming in at 3.5 inches and a blade width of 1.14 inches. Blade thickness on this guy is a beefy 150 thousandths with S35 VN blade steel. And we also have a clip point style blade with a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 5 inches with a handle thickness of 535 thousandths. Handle width on this guy is right around that 1.23 inch mark, depending on where you're measuring on the handle, of course, and a handle width of, or a handle material of G10. Now, special thing about this knife, I think most of you probably know it already, this guy right here, this is the Atlas Lock. The first knife ever to come out with the Atlas Lock, and uh, I gotta say, I had some doubts at first, I had some, some uh, lingering concerns, but... It's all pretty good in the neighborhood with this guy, and we'll, we'll talk about that here more in just a second. We have a user of a right or left hand tip up carry, a weight coming in at 6.6 .6 ounces, but I gotta say, it doesn't feel light, but it it, it feels like a light 6.6 .6 ounces. I don't know how else to put that, but not too bad. If you're wearing jeans or khakis, 6.6 .6 ounces, or any type of regular pants, as long as you're not wearing like basketball shorts or something with elastic waists, 6.6 .6 ounces is not that big of a deal. It, it may be to some people, but for me it's not, and I think for most people it's not. So not a big issue there. And price is coming in at $179.99 according to DLT Trading's website. But also keep in mind, if you see this cheaper somewhere else, let's, let's say Blade HQ has it on sale for uh, 165 or 170 whatever, um, DLT Trading has been known to match um, major retailers comp competing prices. So um, it's always worth, if you, if you see this knife listed somewhere else for less and you want to buy it from DLT, let them know. I, I'm pretty sure they do some price matching. Um, I think anything within reason, they're going to match for you. So always worth noting to keep in mind. Now let's take a look at some size comparisons and uh, see just exactly what we got going on here. Because this is not a small knife. This is a rather big knife. Um, before we hop on the cold steel train and take a look at some other cold steels, let's take a look at these two knives. We have the Damn Designs Basilisk, and I think Basilisk, whatever, you guys know about that, whatever. Um, and the Giant Mouse Ace Grand. And I kind of got caught up in my words there. What I meant to say was, I think I pronounced the name right. I think it's Basilisk, but Basilisk, one of the two for the Damn Designs model. But nonetheless, um, as you can see, it actually measures up really well with the Basilisk in terms of length and feel in hand. It's, it's, it's pretty close in hand if you're doing the hammer grip. Obviously, the choil will make it a little different, but the overall handle width thickness, overall knife size is a pretty good comparison to this guy. And uh, it's a decent comparison to the Grand as well. So I think those two there give you a pretty good idea of what we got here. But of course, since we have a cold steel on the review table, it would only be right to take a look at my other two, probably my two favorite cold steels. I don't, I don't, I'm not 100% sure where this ranks in the top three, definitely in the top three. Um, it's probably ahead of this guy, the 4Max Scout. Um, I don't open the 4Max Scout during reviews anymore. I've learned my lesson. So I had that pre-open and straight to set there. And then we also have the Cold Steel 8010. And I gotta say, I was ready, I was ready to call this engage my favorite Cold Steel. I really was. The fidget factors there. We'll touch on a lot of that stuff later. But when I pulled this 8010 back out, it the 8010 is just really good. It's really good, and I think the Engage is going to fall right behind the 8010 for me for a couple reasons, and, and I'll point those out as we go. Um, 
8010 still good. But this knife right here, the Engage, let's talk about it. And let's let's talk about the goods and, the, the, well, in my opinion, I don't really think there's any bads, to be honest. There may be one bad that's a little nitpicky. But in terms of the blade, what we have here, um, pretty nice looking clip point with a very beefy tip here. Uh, definitely, this is a cold steel tip. Cold steel tips are never slicey. They're very sharp, but they're made to, 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 to be a little, a little chubby brute. And that's what this tip is here. Very nice strength all the way up to the tip. Um, that S35 VN steel is gonna hold up just fine. Um, and if it's anything like cold steels in the past, uh, the heat treat is gonna be on point, gonna be very good, uh, hold a really good edge for you. Now, thickness behind the edge on this guy is a little thicker than normal. We're coming in at 29 to 30 thousandths. Um, so that's not ideal, but at the same time, this is a very smooth edge. And I think that's, it's worth pointing out. And when I say smooth, um, what I mean by it is it still feels like it actually slices pretty well at 29 to 30 thousandths. I mean, I've had other blades at 29 to 30 thousandths that just tear paper. This still slices through paper just fine. And what I mean by that is I, I think it's basically just a, a smooth grind and it's a little wider or a, a little wider angle of a grind. So you see a little more of a sharpened edge. Um, and it does work very well. Could it be, do I wish it had a hollow grind and was maybe coming in at 20 to 23 thousandths? Of course I do. But at the same time, not every knife is made to be a nice thin slicer. Some of them are just made to be brutes. And I think this is supposed to be somewhere in between that. So in terms of, I think, what they were going for with this model, I think they hit it pretty well. Um, definitely a knife that's going to hold up just fine for any EDC task and probably be really good for some heavy duty cuts and tasks as well. So, um, I think they got the point across. I think they accomplished everything they wanted to accomplish with this blade, uh, shape as well as, you know, the work that would be related to. Um, the one thing that I don't really like on this blade, and you probably already know it, um... This year I'm good with the, the 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 cold steel S35 Taiwan. That that's all good. It's it's you know it's the clip side. It's whatever I expect there to be a little branding there. I don't really like the model name billboard so big on the blade. I I would much rather see engage instead of right front and center and in, in a rather big font. I would rather see it down here, maybe like right where this angle is. Maybe just engage right there. That would be a lot better. This is just a little too. It's too much billboarding for me. I'm not a big fan of that. I really wish that wasn't there because I think if this was a little more of a cleaner blade, maybe move that engage in a smaller smaller font or smaller font size and bring it down here, text size, whatever you want to call it, and move it right here on this angle. I think that would have looked a lot better. But it, just the overall blade shape alone, I think is very good. Um, the thumb stud is in an okay place for me. It's it's a little far out in kind of actually no, you know, the more I look at it, I should have. I already noticed this, but yeah, with the choil and the actual sharpened edge, um, the thumb stud is fully behind the cutting path. So no real issue there. And uh, as you go into these ergos and get them in hand, this is a knife that really does excel really, really good in the choked up position. It feels phenomenal in the choked up position. Uh, almost as good as the AD-10. Almost. Um, where you start to feel the clip a little more is when you move back into this kind of just hammer grip and just get it right there in the middle of your palm. You, you feel that clip more than you want to. And that's one of the reasons why I do kind of like the 8010 a little more. I don't mean for this to be a comparison video, but I just forgot how much I like the 8010. Um, the clip, it feels so good in hand because of the nature and how it's designed. Um, and you still have your choil up here and it feels good in either grip in your hand. Um, now, like I said, the engage feels fantastic in your hand, but you got to get, you got to be in that choked up position for me to really, to really, truly enjoy, um, somewhat hand hugging ergos. This is, these are pretty darn good ergos, um, for this knife with that nice, generous choil up there and you're real close to the blade. You're, you're good to go and good to work. I also wish, of course, you know, I'm going to say this, but I wish there was some jimping right, right here, right? Going up to before it starts to get into the curve there, some jimping right here that would be perfect. So you're, you're sliding a little up there. Um, but because of this, uh, 
basically finger guard for your middle finger here. Um, I think it's going to protect your grip on the knife really well, so I'm not super concerned, but I really wish there would have been some chipping there. There, I definitely think there should have been. Um, but everything outside of that, with the exception of feeling the clip and more of the hammer grip, um, the ergos on this knife are pretty solid. The three milled lines on the handle look pretty good, actually. Um, they do add some grip and some texture, and I think they look okay. Um, so no real issue there. And then the clip itself, in terms of function, it's great. Uh, deep carry. I like how that the end is really low, but it's actually, this is just up so high, it makes this a lot smaller than it really is. Um, there is enough room here to get over your average jeans and khakis and any types of pants you're wearing. Obviously, like basketball shorts are going to be fine, but then you run into the whole weight issue. But um, yeah, it's just really high back here as to where this isn't quite as low as it may look. It's enough for me to get uh, through any of my pants pockets. So no issue there, but because of how high this is raised up, you're going to feel that more in hand when you have it in the hammer grip. But again, if I'm using this, I'm probably going to have it in, uh, I'm going to be using that finger choil, so no real issue there. Uh, now, going into the action, this, of course, this is the, the, the $179.99 question on this knife is, is this Atlas lock good? Is it in a good spot? How does it feel to move that far down the handle to close the blade all the time? Because like I said in my original unboxing of this, you're, you're always used to having either the crossbar lock here or a liner lock or frame lock here or even the shark lock right here up high. You're not always moving back down on the handle to close the knife. Is that an issue? And I will say no. I don't think it's an issue at all. Only because I got used to it. Now, do I prefer the shark lock over the Atlas lock? Yes absolutely um all day every day to be honest but that's not saying anything bad against the atlas lock i actually did come to enjoy the axis lock or the atlas lock um it's once you get used to it it's it's pretty natural it, it's like second nature um so you just have to it's one of these knives you got to get it in hand you got to use it um but if you like the shark lock i do think you will grow to really enjoy the atlas lock um, and it feels extremely solid. I, I will also say this, um, the way that the Atlas lock is designed, because, you know, the shark lock is more of like a hump that comes up and comes down. So it's like right there. But the way this is designed, instead of coming straight up and kind of coming back at an angle here and the jimping, the very nice jimping that's on there, I do prefer the feel of this on my index finger over the feel of the shark lock on my finger, if that makes sense. But I prefer the position of the shark lock up here more than the position of the Atlas lock here. So it's really a mixture of the two. Um, in all honesty, I think if you could move this a little farther up the handle, I don't think you probably can. I think the way the engineering is involved with this, I don't think you could move it any farther up. Maybe they can. If they can, I'd highly recommend doing that. Um, but it's still really good as is. And I really do enjoy it. Um, I think the fidget factor on this is pretty damn high. Um, almost through the roof when you stop and think that you can easily middle finger flick it. Uh, thumb flicking it's pretty easy with just a little bit of wrist because the thumb stud is actually kind of far away from the pivot. So you kind of have to, you got to get that feel down. But just a little bit of wrist will, uh, will kick it out. Now one thing worth noting, um, there's basically no detent on this knife. Like that, that much, a, a, a relatively light shake will, will kick the blade out like that. I'll shake it a little harder and it, it basically comes out. Now, with that being said, I would not worry at all about this opening up in my pocket. Personally, me, because there is, there is still some pullback and some resistance. I mean, you gotta, I can pull it all the way out here. That's where it'll basically stop, but I just touched it and it was pulled back in. Um, so I definitely think it's a safe knife. I'm not worried about this opening up in my pocket one bit. Um, that wouldn't ever even linger into my mind. But like I said, very light detent. But that's the nature of these types of locks, this axis lock. And it's really kind of the same case with the shark lock. Maybe the shark lock has a little more pull, um, but this is still totally acceptable to me. Um, very easy to kick it out. And when you get down to it, when you get used to it, it, it is really fun to just kick that blade out 
um, using this Atlas lock. And of course, like I said, middle finger fingers, middle finger finger, the middle finger deployment is good as well as that thumb stud. So very, very nice, smooth action on this and the Atlas lock does make it very darn good. Overall thoughts on this knife are very positive. Um, even in my notes here, I actually have it listed as my favorite cold steel, but that was before I took this 8010 out to, to, for the size comparisons. I do still like the 8010 a little more. If the 8010, they really do, they got to figure it out. I don't know if Demko Knives would be okay with this, especially now that he's kind of like doing his own thing, but the 8010... With the Axis lock, with the Atlas lock, that's really hard to specify the difference between those. Every time I say Atlas, I want to say Axis. But if I could get an 8010, not the 8010 Lite, I want the regular 8010 with S35VN, maybe even Magna Cut, that would be sweet. But regardless, the 8010 with the Atlas lock would be by far and away, nothing would even come close to it, the best cold steel knife ever. Um, but as this knife is right here, it is a really good one. I really do like it, even with its little quirks of the of the model name, so loud and proud on the blade, and, and even kind of how the blade is set up on the rest of the handle, which is a little a, a little different. Um, I do really like this knife. I would 100% recommend it. I think it's a great lock, a fidgety lock, and uh, 179 is getting up there, but everything's up there nowadays, nothing's cheap. But at the end of the day, I think it's a great knife. I think it's one you'd enjoy. Um, if you already have the Atlas lock, let me, or the, the engage with the Atlas lock, let me know what you think of it. Um, that's it guys. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed this review. I love getting new locks and new things in my hands. So this was a fun one. I hope it was fun for you guys to watch. Hope you have a great rest of your day and until the next one, I'm out.